honoring its history, promoting its present, and focusing on the future. That's what the people of Milton do, and it's resulted in a small town with a lot to offer. Walk our downtown, view our parks, uh, enjoy our award-winning restaurants. That's the plan today as we explore this Sussex County town and some of the gems that make it shine. And they were like, we can't believe that this kind of a quality of a show, we just walk from our houses and we can experience this kind of quality and it's right here in Milton. A small town with a global impact. You know, we're kind of growing and growing, but you saw those old sort of historic feels, those mom and pop shops. From drink to other delectable delights. That was the, what this place was about. It was a place to get away and a place to just kind of enjoy your moment and your, your day. We'll also show you how the people of Milton thrive on community and commitment to those who stop by. I don't feel like I have coworkers. I feel like it's family members, and I feel that way about our customers as well. And we'll visit those shops that give Milton that hometown feeling. We pictured a, a meat store here. You know, it just had that small, you know, charming feel right away, and we just figured it was meant to be. Join us as we explore yet another treasure that's an integral part of the place we call home. Del Marble Live Small Town Series, Milton. Here we go. So excited, another small town series today. We are heading to Milton, Delaware. Taking a road trip, stick with us because there's going to be some things that we share this hour that you may not even know. Mm -hmm. The area we now know as Milton was first inhabited by the Lenni Lenape and Nanticoke Indians. It wasn't until 1675 that English planters began to settle into that area. In 1763, Milton was founded as head of the Broad Kiln. That was the name yeah. of the town. Uh, the Broad Kill River stretches from Milton to the Delaware Bay, but its path is very convoluted and that actually worked to the town's advantage when when pirate and naval attacks plagued the bayfront towns in the early centuries. Kind of hard to navigate yeah. all of that. The town prospered as an important point for the shipping of agricultural products during the 18th century. A thriving shipbuilding industry supported the growth of the community, with large numbers of vessels being produced by local shipyards. Yeah, in 1807, the Delaware legislature uh, changed the name of the settlement from head of the broad kiln to Milton in honor of the famous English poet. And they, to this day, have a statue in Milton of, of Milton. Of Milton? Yeah. Oh, I didn't How know cool that. How that? I didn't know that until I started doing a little research. How about this? Mm -hmm. So in the 1920s, Milton became a center for the button industry. There were as many as eight button factories in town. During the Great Depression, most folks couldn't afford new clothes. So what they would do is they would replace the broken or the missing buttons instead of just tossing out whatever it was they were trying to wear. In addition to the button factories in Milton, several individual families were cranking out buttons at their homes. The most famous of the bigger Milton operations were the Lippincott Factory and the Excelsior Pearl Button Works. Uh, other button factories on Delmarva used oyster shells to make buttons. However, in Milton, abalone shells were imported from the South Pacific. So by the late, uh, the late 1950s, pearl buttons had been replaced by the cheaper plastic. Buttons. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Now, by the early 20th century, Milton's town center was well developed with general merchandising shops, stores, taverns, and restaurants, and a movie theater. But on a very dry August morning in 1909, disaster struck the town. A fire started at what was called the Big Store on the corner of Federal and Front Streets. In the end, 18 buildings were destroyed in the downtown area. One of the uh, Milton's largest employers throughout the 20th century was Draper King Coal Cannery. Uh, tomatoes, peas, peaches, lima beans, and corn were sourced from local farmers, then processed at the cannery. The cannery was eventually sold to Hanover Foods Corporation in 1999, and after the cannery was shut down, it was eventually bought by Tom Draper. You may know that name from WBOC. He demolished most of the building. One building from the original cannery is now part of what is now Dogfish Head Brewery. The rest of the land was redeveloped into a housing development called Cannery Village. How about that? 
Isn't that neat? Oh wait, there's more. The cannery was just part of the industrial development of the late 19th century. Uh, granaries were also well established in the south end of town. Uh, here the Queen Anne's Railroad, which is later called the Maryland and Delaware Coast Railway, crossed Federal and Chestnut Streets with rail services to points north through Ellendale, six miles to the west. At the time, passengers could take the train to Love Point in Maryland, then take a ferry to Baltimore. Passenger service ended in 1931, but the Milton Ellingdale segment of the Queen Anne's Railroad is still functional today. Yeah. Okay, well, disaster would strike the town of Milton again, this time in 1962. That's when the Ash Wednesday storm left the town underwater. Look at that. The three-day nor'easter pounded the coast in March and lingered for five consecutive high tides in the Delmarva area. After it was over, the best way to get around downtown Milton was by boat. Goodness gracious, mm -hmm. that's a lot of water. It is. A year after the Ash Wednesday storm, Prime Hook National Wildlife Refuge was established. 10,000 acres along the western shore of the Delaware Bay, containing a variety of habitats, supporting more than 300 species of birds, as well as fish, reptiles, and amphibians. The refuge is an important stopover site for migratory birds as they travel up and down the Atlantic Flyway. And if you've never been there, you need to make a trip. It's absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's a look at Milton's past. Now it's time to focus on the future. I uh, hope you have your sunglasses because it is a bright one and it's all thanks to the people who have a passion, um, a commitment actually to Milton. That's what inspires them to come up with great ideas that keep the town thriving. We're going to explore a few of them. Nestled in town, you'll find the historic Milton Theater for more than a hundred years. It's served as a place where people of all ages can unwind and let the worries of the world whisk away. Lights, camera, action, you're going to see why this is one of the stars of today's show. This is another one, and thanks to a solid foundation in Milton, Dogfish Head Brewery has been able to branch out globally. 1025 WBOC's Corey Viva stopped by to see the inner workings of this brewing behemoth. And you know we're not going to visit Milton without checking out the chow, right? You know us so well. From food with Irish flair to what's described as an adorable bistro that offers coffee comfort food calories don't count, by the way, uh, <laughs> we are getting a taste of the culinary classics that you'll find in Milton. You also find specialty shops like the Butcher Block on Union Street. You'll find what you want hand cut to how you want it. It's one of those places where you walk in and boom, you feel like family. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> now, the only thing that we would like to hook today is you. The Marvel Life Small Town Series Milton. We'll be right back. An aerial look at Milton from Chopper 16, 1.2 square miles of beauty to explore in Sussex County. And while you're doing that, no matter what time of the year it is, you're sure to come across people who are so proud of this little piece of the peninsula. And for good reason. We've already touched on Milton's history, but the town is still going strong. It's all thanks to Milton's passionate people and their commitment to community as we hear from Delmarva Life's Katie Zarelli. The delightful town of Milton comprises not even two square miles. This seemingly small community has a big heart that beats boldly. For a small town, we are a busy town. Christy Rogers has held the title of town manager for the last three years. When she looks at Milton, she sees a place that fosters future prosperity while honoring a great history. We welcome growth, um, but again, we focus on our heritage and our values that keep Milton what it is. That heritage can be seen in the town's architecture and streets. Milton began as a shipbuilding community, then got into the canning industry by packing beans, later shifted to button making, and is now well known for its beer. So Milton is known historically for, I tend to say the four B's, it's boats, buttons, beans, and beer. Quick note about a few more B's, Milton is seven miles from the Delaware Bay and only minutes from the beach. We are the hidden gem, you know, we are the next place where it is just going to grow. We have the residential areas, we have the commercial areas on Mulberry Street and Route 16, um, but we also have a great downtown that has award-winning restaurants, it has, you know, shops, and it has the retail that people are looking for. Something else folks might be looking for, what's a town without great events? Those are here too. Summertime is busy with the Horseshoe Crab and Shorebird Festival, the Summer Concert Series, the Andy and Opie Fishing Tournament, Bring Back Mayberry to Milton 4th of July, and Bargains on the Broad Kill in late August, all of which typically bring in big crowds. 
And I think they, they see the special, unique characters, characteristics of Milton that really, you know, people just want more. You know, they're always asking what events are going on and, um, you know, how can we participate? How can we help? How can we be a part of it? Because they see the growth. They see what, what it does bring. Another group of people who see Milton's unrivaled uniqueness is the rest of the town staff, about 20 or so individuals. We all just have a passion for Milton, making sure that decisions are made correctly um, so that we have you know, smart, manageable growth as, as we move into the future. You certainly don't have to be from Milton to be passionate about the place. That was true of the late Tom Draper, former owner of WBOC. I would be remiss if I did not mention Mr. Tom Draper. He was a wonderful person, such a visionary and such a philanthropist for our town. You know, it's hard to look around Milton and not see his thumbprint, especially the Milton Historical Society. He was such a contributor and such uh, valued Milton so much. Even though he was not a native of Milton, Milton was part of his home. Next time you visit, stop and enjoy. You too might see what he saw. Walk our downtown, view our parks, uh, enjoy our award-winning restaurants. Um, we have a lot to offer. You won't be able to get enough of this special spot in Sussex County. Rich history, a spectacular now, and a bright and beautiful future. It is so great to hear from people who are so passionate about where they work, live, and play. And she mentioned Tom Draper, you know. Yeah. He had a special place in his heart for the town of Milton. And Milton. like she said, you look around and you see it everywhere. Milton was his home. Yep. Let's talk about one of the hottest tickets in the town of Milton, the Milton Theater, packed with hundreds of seats so you can enjoy shows of all kinds. Like many other landmarks in town, it has got a whole lot of history. Yeah, and it's also got a bright future. Over the last year, the theater hosted more than 300 events, and staff say they plan to do even more next year. Here's Del Marva Life's Katie Zerilli to pull back the curtain. The Milton Theater. Let's put a spotlight on this more than 100-year-old gem, shall we? The local landmark sits on Union Street and provides all kinds of entertainment for folks young and old. You name it, we got it. We've got comedy shows, magic shows, tributes, rock shows, children's programs, plays, everything that you can dream of as long as we can put it here on the stage, we are going to present it to the local community. J.P. LeCap is the marketing director, part of the team that's brought more than 300 events to this place in the last year. That's up from about 75 events five years ago. We kept experimenting with booking different, different kinds of shows and people keep showing up and buying tickets. Keep in mind, this theater has quite the history. In fact, if you were to craft its story into a play, you'd have far more than just two acts. It started as a theater for silent movies and remained a theater through the early 60s. It was a little all over the place after the Great March Storm of 1962 and only became a theater again in the early 2000s. It's been a fire hall, it's been the high school basketball court, it's been a restaurant, a gift shop, someone's personal garage for his car collection. So right now we are very excited that it is back to a thriving theater. Shows are continually selling out. JP says by the end of the year, they'll probably have brought 60,000 people through these doors. Earlier this year, they self-produced the rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar and put it on this stage and it was a heavenly hit. Everyone was leaving the theater crying and everyone was just complimenting us. They were, you know, they were like, we can't believe that this kind of a quality of a show, we just walk from our houses and we can experience this kind of quality that otherwise we would have to go to Washington or New York or Philadelphia and it's right here in Milton. Another quality element of this theater, the refreshments. Local beer, fine wine, all kinds of snacks, and the best part is, you don't have to scarf them down during intermission. You can enjoy them during the show, and they even have table service. People prefer to, you know, drink and dine and snack while they are seeing entertainment. So it just, it was, it was just organic for us to, to do that. This theater can fit 236 people sitting and there's a ton of standing room. And if you want to get really fancy and get a VIP seat, you'll be up close and personal and you'll have a table for your food and drink. You can also sit back in the cabaret area if you want to. And in the next year or so, they could be adding a balcony like the theater used to have. 
No matter where you sit, as soon as the curtain opens and the action starts, you'll be brought to life in a special way that can only be done through live theater. It's just electric. That is, that is how I want to describe the Milton Theater. Once you come through our doors, you can just feel that there's a different kind of energy um, in this place and that you're just super excited about what about the experience that's going to that, that's going to come. They've got 42 different events headed your way over the holidays. This is also a perfect place for kids to give acting a go. They've got a number of different classes for students of all ages. It's a great way for kids to um, to develop um, their talents and you know in this in this day and age where kids are so used to communicating with their peers through through screens. It is um, a very good way for kids to socialize. It's easy for someone like JP to see the value in this place. He's been passionate about the performing arts since he was young. He says what he's truly thrilled about, though, is the way the town has championed its success. The community has been very supportive um, of us, and they have been very open-minded with the things that we bring in. And again, you know, we bring in all kinds of shows and people come to them. And perhaps when they applaud after the final scene, they're cheering not only for the production, but for the people and the place that make it all possible. Another fun fact for you about the Milton Tea, the, the space is completely flexible. What that means is they can move the tables and chairs around for whatever an event needs. You know, not long ago, we had a, uh, a date night and we went to Irish Eyes, which we're gonna be talking about in a few minutes, and then went to the Milton Theater for a show, and what a night it was. Huh? Yeah. Turned out nice, didn't it? All right, if you'd like a list of upcoming events, you can visit DelmarvaLife.com. A look at Dogfish Head Brewery in Milton from Chopper 16. 24 years ago, would you have ever imagined Dogfish Head would be where it is today? Now, with solid roots in Milton, the company has branched out to worldwide. It doesn't show signs of slowing down anytime soon. Now, here's the thing, though. When you hear the name Dogfish Head, you probably associate it with just craft beer, right? Well, that makes sense, and I can tell you firsthand their IPAs are off the charts, but here's why Dogfish is just different. Their craft beer is just a part of what makes up their brand, and as we hear from 1025 WBOC's Corey Phoebus, it's a brand that just seems to keep getting bigger and better. Successful businesses only remain successful by never forgetting where they came from and by being transparent. Kim Coot of Dogfish Head in Milton does a fantastic job of conveying that to its patrons. So we really value our culture here at Dogfish Head and really want to kind of show that to people. Uh, and the best way to do that is through giving our tours. You know, we go through the whole history, how we started back in 1995 in Rehoboth. Uh, up till now when we're here in Milton, uh, brewing on a 200 barrel system. We have tours exclusively for brewing and then we also have tours that dive into distilling, uh, kind of more like cocktail focused, more deep dives into that. Uh, sort of a neat way to experience all of Dogfish kind of in one go with a varying, varying tours um, throughout the week. While Dogfish Head is nationwide, by visiting the facility in Milton, you'll get the inside scoop to see some of Dogfish Head's new exciting projects. So we've got a um, series of beers that we do only here in Milton. We've got a seven barrel uh, R&D system here. We brew beers exclusively on that system and sell them to our guests that come into the tasting room. Um, from there, they can actually kind of fill out a survey on a featured beer and let us know if it's something that they like. Uh, if they like it enough, it could become a full scale production um, released throughout the country and otherwise just need to kind of see beers that we're kind of playing around with, new ingredients and new techniques and all that sort of stuff. What's a good drink without some good food? So we have a kitchen here in Milton. Um, we've got pizzas and calzones and we've got salads and sandwiches, different specials kind of every day, depending on what uh, our kitchen staff wanna, wants to cook up. We try to infuse as many beers into our things as possible, whether that's uh, beer into our pizza sauce or putting some black limes that we use on our sequin ale and our rice for our burritos. Dogfish Head began distilling in 2002 in Rehoboth. Once they were able to expand, they moved to Milton in 2015. Uh, everything is made from grain to glass. We brew our own wash here in Milton. We then sell it to ourselves and use that to distill our spirits. So all of our spirits are scratch made in house, uh, making for a really good quality sort of flavored spirit, if you will. Remember, one of the best ways to support your favorite business is by showing others how much you appreciate them. And you can do just that by sporting some off-centered threads. 
Yeah, so we've got all sorts of t-shirts, jackets, um, sort of flannels and button downs. We've also got all sorts of beer, um, sort of more occasional beers that are hard to find throughout the country. We typically tend to have them here in store. We've got all of our spirits in the shop. Kim and the rest of the Dogfish Head crew consider themselves to be family, working together at home, and that is something I think we can all appreciate. So obviously our kind of tagline is off-center ales for off-center people. All of us here are a little bit quirky, a little bit unique, but that kind of makes our culture what it is. We're all very passionate about what we do. We love what we do, but we also really enjoy working with each other. Um, you know, everybody here is kind of like family. We all kind of rally together and we work together as a team day in and day out. Working here, you really kind of get that small town feel. Um, there are a lot of locals who come in a couple times a week and you get to really know them. You get to go out to the town and as you're out in the town you get to kind of see how it really kind of is like an old school town. You know, we're kind of growing and growing but you saw those old sort of historic feels, those mom and pop shops. Um, sort of a neat way to kind of come, almost like coming home when you're going to work. Dogfish Head has come a long way and they've also been the prime example of creating a family-based business, creating off-centered ales for off-centered people in a family-based town. All right, so how much time do you have? Because we could spend the rest of the hour talking about all of the ways Dogfish Head has been giving back to the community. For instance, their Beer and Benevolence program supports so many nonprofit organizations. In fact, Jimmy, one of the largest beer and benevolence, event, benevolence events is the Dogfish Dash, which right. you know I run yeah. every year. Yeah. Um, but when it comes time to sign up for it, I have to sit at my computer and wait for the registration to open because it sells out within minutes. Oh my goodness. That just speaks a lot about the company and it what does. they do. Um, it really does. Yeah. It's great. One of the first buildings built after the fire of 1909 was this one on Union Street. At the time, it was a location of an establishment called Black and Lingo. Now, here it is today. The very same building, now the location of Irish Eyes Pub and Restaurant which actually is quite fitting that the eatery is in a historic building because in the years it's been there, it's become a part of Milton history on its own. And that's why folks keep coming back for more. For nearly 15 years, Irish Eyes Pub and Restaurant has been a staple in historic downtown Milton. It's an Irish pub. You know, it's a fun place. I mean, we, that's what we want it to be. It's a place we can come relax. Tom Jones and his partners opened it after having success with Irish Eyes in Rehoboth Beach since 1986. The Milton location quickly became a favorite. Here in Milton, everybody knows everybody, so it's, it's a nice community bar. When we opened here in 2006, it was a little, you know, a little worrisome. We weren't sure how we were going to be received, and the whole town welcomed us with open arms and have, and have treated us that way ever since. Mary Ellen Kierman is in charge of community events at Irish Eyes. She says that community vibe is a secret to their success. I don't feel like I have coworkers. I feel like it's family members, and I feel that way about our customers as well. And the folks at Irish Eyes extend that warmth out into the community. We do a lot with uh, the fire department, the theater, a lot of the uh, local charities. Uh, food bank, um, which is right up the road. Like I say, a small town. You know, it's easy to give back to people that support you. and We get tremendous support. Of course, having an Irish pub means doing it up big for St. Patrick's Day. At Irish Eyes, it begins with a parade. We first came here, we said this is the perfect town to have a, a parade. So we started this uh, St. Patrick's Day parade, which is always the Sunday before St. Patrick's Day. The parade is also a fundraising event for the fire department and an agriculture scholarship through the local Chamber of Commerce. Christmas is a big celebration too. We've been doing it since we opened in 1986. Uh, it's a local thing, people come out, uh, you can get your picture taken with Santa Claus, there's crafts to do, there's uh, just all kinds of activities. The adults get into it as much as the kids do and it's just been a lot of fun. Tom says the best part is, it's free. In the summertime, Irish Eye sponsors a July 4th bike parade for the kids. We uh, give bikes to the uh, boys and girls, winners, they get a free bike uh, that we sponsor and we put that together and it's like, the theme is bringing Mayberry back to Milton because that's pretty much what it is. There's pie eating contests and bake contests and you know, there's all free activities again in the, in the park. But you can't talk about an Irish pub like Irish Eyes without talking about its delicious pub food. On the top of that list is the famous fish and chips 
which is a hand-breaded haddock. A lot of it's pub food. You know, we're not uh, a high-end white tablecloth type restaurant. Uh, we're, we're pub food and we do that right and uh, people seem to like it. Weeknight specials include cheesesteaks on Monday, burgers on Tuesday, and wing night is on Thursdays. All of our bar food is made from scratch. We have a lot of interesting specials throughout the week. No matter what night you stop into Irish Eyes in Milton, Tom, Mary Ellen, and the rest of the staff want to make sure you feel like you've walked into a place where everybody knows your name. That sounds familiar. Irish Eyes Pub and Restaurant is open 364 days a year from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. That looked fantastic. It all looks so good. Wow. By now, you've got a pretty good glimpse of the enchanting small town that is Milton. The community's delightful vibe is what attracts businesses to come in and make it home. And that's the story of the Butcher Block, which opened up in February of 2016. It's a meat market with a mom and pop feel. One where you can count on getting fresh quality cuts. Here's to Marvel Lives, Katie Zerilli. Meat lovers, welcome to paradise. One quick glance around the butcher block in Milton is enough to make your eyes widen and your stomach let out a growl. We have a full line of uh, beef, pork, veal, um, poultry, uh, homemade sausages, tenderloins. This shop is an extension of Hickman's Meat Market in Rehoboth, which has been open for 19 years. A few years ago, Brian Hickman and gang were looking for a small town to open up a satellite location. And all signs pointed to Milton, specifically Union Street. We pictured a, a meat store here. You know, it just had that small, you know, charming feel right away. and. We just figured it was meant to be. And since February of 2016, it's delivered on that small, special feel. If you picture the lady who gets the same ground sirloin every Thursday for her burger night, and it's, it's great. It's really neat to see. Brian is fifth generation in the meat business. No question, it's a labor of love. It's just what I know. It, it, I definitely, I, and it's funny, it's not even, I went to college for criminal justice, you know, and it was just one of those things I, I fell back into. I realized that, it, once I was out in the world for a little bit, I was like, I, it's in my blood. It really is, and I got into it and loved it. You know, I fell in love with it. Easy to see his passion, right? He's also passionate about providing the highest quality product possible. We really go with stuff that's no hormones, no antibiotics, uh, no pesticide in the feed. Super, super fresh stuff. Um, you know, we get multiple deliveries a week. That super fresh stuff is then handled with care and cut to perfection. We are trained meat cutters. You know, there's not too many of them around anymore. It's definitely, you know, it's a, a dying art, but people love it. All right, my pal Vincent here is going to show us how to peel this tenderloin. Yep. All right, what are we doing? So put your hand here. Yeah. And you're going to want to slowly peel that membrane off. You can oh. be rough with it. Oh. Yeah. I'm being rough. Get at it. You have to be strong to do this. Um, Vincent. <laughs> so what you want to do. Am I not doing it right? Is focus on this side a little bit. Okay. Oh yeah. That's, and then. You got it. You'll pull that off. Oh look at that. And you can actually just follow it oh. through. <laughs> and then you come to the chain. Yep. He can not only cut the meat, but then explain how to, you know, how to prepare it. What's the best way, best recipe. And that's kind of what we always go for the customer service. You know, that's that's what we really strive for. Some people even bring in old recipes and get advice on how to best prepare, say, a pork chop the way grandma did it. Sometimes somebody will just come in and be like, I don't know, you know, what I want for dinner, what, what's good. And, and that's the thing that we have to offer, you know, with, from start to finish, how to prepare it and, and what to do with it. All right, it's cutting time. Yep. So go ahead, get rid of the tip a little bit. You tip. just want to flat. Flat knife. There we go. Flat knife. Okay. Yeah. Here we Watch go. your fingers. Oof. There we go. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Yep. And then Gone. cut right about there. Okay. That'll be one of your eight ounce steaks. Oh. How's that? And then you can flip it over. Flip it over. And you got a nice little <gasps> eight ounce. That looks nice. Yep. While my cutting skills might not be prime, you can certainly trust that Vincent's are. You can also trust that no matter how popular this place gets, 
they're dedicated to keeping its homey atmosphere. Well, of course we want to do other things. We, we want to expand in some direction, but we kind of want, went into this saying, like, we want to maintain that small, you know, mom and pop shop kind of feel. Quite similar to the lovely little town the business sits in. And Katie asked Brian what his favorite steak was, and he said ribeye. Okay, and she also asked what the most popular product was. He said they can't keep their snack sticks on the shelves. And uh, apparently Katie and her photog made sure that the shelves were empty because they were so good. Yeah, I believe the word they used was... Obsessed. Obsessed. Mm -hmm. If that juicy red meat didn't have your mouth watering in our last segment, maybe what's inside this pastry case will do the trick. How sweet do those treats look? Oh, yeah. That's just one piece of the menu. At the Suburban Farmhouse in Milton, they have coffee, sandwiches, even a build-your-own pizza bar. Kristen Latham opened the place a couple of years ago thinking it'd just be a small bistro in a small town, but it took off. Just like Delmarva Life's Katie Zerilli did when we told her to go check it out. It's where city and country collide. It's where urban meets edgy. It's your morning jolt joint and your post-work pizza parlor. The suburban farmhouse in downtown Milton is a touch of everything. You would never find a farmhouse in suburbia. So it's stripes and polka dots and, you know, a little bit of snarky and a little bit of ribbing and fun with the guests that come in. Kristen Latham opened the place up about two years ago. Having done the corporate job in the big city for years, it was time for her to live the small town life and provide a peaceful place for the people here. That was this, what this place was about, it was a place to get away and a place to just kind of enjoy your moment and your, your day. Whether that moment comes at the start or the end of the day, you'll find something to suit your craving. We have a full breakfast line now and we have um, a full coffee, espresso, any kind of specialty drinks. Um, teas, hot teas, black teas, cold teas, um, all kinds of um, chais and horchatas and all uh, in a very expansive coffee line. And so you enjoy your coffees or you sit down and enjoy a full line of breakfast. We move to our lunches. We have a, now we have a full sandwich, salad, soups, and then we even have our own pizza bar. A pizza bar with a chef that's been dabbling with dough for 27 years. Pick your sauce, pick your cheese, pick your toppings. The whole process takes, with the cooking time and making it, you know, to order from scratch, anywhere from five to six minutes, three and a half minutes in the oven, and usually two to three minutes to make it, depending on how many toppings a customer would want. Funny thing is, all of this wasn't exactly Kristen's plan. It just kind of evolved, and she's happy it did. We just shifted. We just thought we were going to be a small little bistro, have some fun little home goods and a coffee, something to bite and go, and now it's turned into a full-blown bistro. Coffee connoisseurs like me love places like this. I went a little fancy today, got a vanilla latte, perfection. And have you ever seen anything like this before? It's called a cruffin. It's basically a breakfast sandwich and a muffin and a croissant all in one. Yes, please. The idea was grab and go. You have this flaky texture of your croissant and then all of your, your breakfast sandwich in one beautiful little muffin. Their most popular coffee blend is their Italian roast. You can be sure of two things about their menu. It's going to stay the same, and it's going to change. We have our basic menu, and it's a nice size menu, but every day something is on special or something is different, or and the pastry case changes on a daily basis. They do that because of the loyalty of their locals, who, by the way, they know by name and order. Orders are handed over with a personal touch, and they're completed in just the right amount of time. It's not, you know, sit down and wait 20 minutes for a food, but it's not fast food. It's just what Milton needed, Kristen says, and Milton is just the town she needed to make this happen. And if the past is any indication of the future of this place, Kristen says she's buckling up for what will be a wild ride. What I wanted it to be when I opened it two years ago and what it is now, all I do is hang on to my hat because it's just been a constant, ever-changing, beautiful little monster. Ever-changing. It's I don't know. I, I want to see what it has planned for us. 
So far, it's certainly been sweeter than a double chocolate muffin and livelier than even the strongest latte. The suburban farmhouse is open seven days a week. Now, when you're inside, you might see a funky sign or two in there that you like because uh, the place is full of them. And the good news is, Kristen says those are for sale too. All I know is I need one of those cruffins to get in my belly. <laughs>